Adam Hunschlager. Adam Gottlob Hunschlager was a Danish poet and playwright. He introduced Romanticism into Danish literature. He was born in Vesterbro, then a suburb of Copenhagen, on November 14, 1779. His father, a Schleswiger by birth, was at that time organist, and later became keeper, of the Royal Palace of Fredericksburg. He was a very brisk and cheerful man. The poet's mother, on the other hand, who was partly German by extraction, suffered from depression, which afterwards deepened into melancholy madness. Hunschlager and his sister Sophie were allowed their own way throughout their childhood, and were taught nothing, except to read and write, until their twelfth year. At the age of nine, Hunschlager began to make fluent verses. Three years later, while walking in Fredericksburg Gardens, he attracted the notice of the poet Edvard Storm. And the result of the conversation was that he received a nomination to the college called Posterity's High School, an important institution of which Storm was the principal. Storm himself taught the class of Scandinavian mythology, and thus Hunschlager received his earliest bias towards the poetical religion of his ancestors. Hunschlager was confirmed in 1795, and was to have been apprenticed to a tradesman in Copenhagen. To his great delight there was a hitch in the preliminaries, and he returned to his father's house. He now, in his eighteenth year, suddenly took up study with great zeal, but soon again abandoned his books for the stage, where he was offered a small position. In 1797 he made his appearance on the boards in several successive parts, but soon discovered that he possessed norial histrionic talent. The brothers Ersted, with whom he had formed an intimacy that proved quite profitable to him, persuaded him to quit the stage, and in 1800 he entered the University of Copenhagen as a student. He was doomed, however, to disturbance in his studies, first from the death of his mother, next from his inveterate tendency towards poetry, and finally from the First Battle of Copenhagen in April 1801, which, however, inspired a dramatic sketch which is the first thing of the kind by Hunschlager that we possess. In the summer of 1802, when Hunschlager had an old Scandinavian romance, as well as a volume of lyrics, in the press, the young Norse philosopher, Henrik Steffens, came back to Copenhagen after a long visit to Schelling in Germany, full of new romantic ideas. His lectures at the university, in which Goethe and Schiller were revealed to the Danish public for the first time, created a great sensation. Steffens and Hunschlager met one day at Dreyer's Club, and after a conversation of sixteen hours the latter went home, suppressed his two coming volumes, and wrote at a sitting his splendid poem called Hornin, in a manner totally new to Danish literature. The result of his new enthusiasm speedily showed itself in a somewhat hasty volume of poems, published in 1803, now chiefly remembered as containing the lovely piece called Sankt Hansaften Spiel. The next two years saw the production of several exquisite works, in particular the epic of Thor's rise at Jodenheim, the charming poem in hexameters called Langelansrasen, and the bewitching piece of fantasy Aladdin. At the age of 26, Hunschlager was universally recognized, even by the opponents of the Romantic Revival, as the leading poet of Denmark. He now collected his poetical writings in two volumes. He found no difficulty in obtaining a grant for foreign travel from the government, and he left his native country for the first time, joining Steffens at Halley in August 1805. Here he wrote the first of his great historical tragedies, Hawk and Jarl, which he sent off to Copenhagen, and then proceeded for the winter months to Berlin where he associated with Humboldt, Fichte, and the leading men of the day, and met Goethe for the first time. In the spring of 1806 he went on to Weimar, where he spent several months in daily intercourse with Goethe. The autumn of the same year he spent with Tiek in Dresden, and proceeded in December to Paris. Here he resided 18 months and wrote his three famous masterpieces, Walter Hingode, Palnatok, and Axel G. Walborg. Hunschlager had also made his own translation of Aladdin into German, adding some extra new material which does not appear in the 1805 edition. This revised version was published in Amsterdam in 1808. Ferruccio Busoni later used the text of this translation for the last movement of his piano concerto Op. 39. Later editions of Hunschlager's play do not contain this text. In July 1808 he left Paris and spent the autumn and winter in Switzerland as the guest of Madame de Stahl at Coppet. In the midst of her circle of wits. In the spring of 1809 Hunschlager went to Rome to visit Bertel Tovelsen, and in his house wrote his tragedy of Correggio. He hurriedly returned to Denmark in the spring of 1810, partly to take the chair of aesthetics at the University of Copenhagen, partly to marry the sister-in-law of Rabeck, to whom he had been long betrothed. 
His first course of lectures dealt with his Danish predecessor Johannes Seewald, the second with Schiller. From this time forward, his literary activity became very great. In 1811, he published The Oriental Tale of Ali O.G. Gullindi, and in 1812, the last of his great tragedies, Sturkotter. From 1814 to 1819, he, or rather his admirers, were engaged in a long and angry controversy with Bagazan who represented the old didactic school. This contest seems to have disturbed the peace of Helmschlager's mind and to have undermined his genius. His talent may be said to have culminated in the glorious cycle of verse romances called Helga, published in 1814. The tragedy of Hibartho G. Cigna, showed a distinct falling off in style. In 1817 he went back to Paris, and published Rohr's Saga and the tragedy of Fostbro Dream. In 1818 he was again in Copenhagen and wrote The Idol of Den Lille hired a drang in the Edaic cycle called Nordenskuter. His next productions were the tragedies of Eric O. G. Abel and Vering Erna Amikligard, and the epic of Ralph Craig. His last volumes were Tordensk Jild, Dronning Marguerite, Socrates, Olaf den Hellage, Knud den Stor, Dina, Eric Glipping, and Kiartan O. G. Gudrun. On his 70th birthday, November 14, 1849, a public festival was arranged in his honor and he was decorated by the King of Denmark under circumstances as off great pomp. He died on January 20, 1850 and was buried in the cemetery of Fredericksburg. Immediately after his death his recollections were published in two volumes. With the exception of Ludwig Holberg, no Danish writer before 1870 has exercised so wide an influence as Helmschlager. His great work was to awaken in the breasts of his countrymen an enthusiasm for the poetry and religion of their ancestors, and this he performed to so complete an extent that his name remains to this day synonymous with Scandinavian romance. He supplied his countrymen with romantic tragedies at the very moment when all eyes were turned to the stage, and when the old fashioned pieces were felt to be inadequate. His plays, partly no doubt in consequence of his own nearly familiarity with acting, fulfilled the stage requirements of the day, and were popular beyond all expectation. The earliest are the best, Elnschlager's dramatic masterpiece being, without doubt, his first tragedy, Hawk and Jarl. In his poems and plays alike his style is limpid, elevated, profuse, his flight is sustained at a high pitch without visible excitement. His fluent tenderness and romantic zest have been the secrets of his extreme popularity. Although his inspiration came from Germany, he is not much like a German poet, except when he is consciously following Goethe. His analogy is rather to be found among English poets than his contemporaries. His mission towards antiquity reminds us of Scott, he sometimes has touches of exquisite diction and of overwrought sensibility which recall Coleridge. In his wide ambition and profuseness, he possessed some characteristics of Robert Southey although his style has far more vitality. With all his faults he was a very great writer, and one of the principal pioneers of the Romantic movement in Europe. In 1829 he was publicly crowned with laurel as the king of Nordic poetry and the Scandinavian king of song in the Cathedral of Lund, Sweden, based on a vast production of poetry, theatre plays and prose, inspired by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, Gottlieb Fichte, and Friedrich von Schelling. He wrote the song Der Eret Weindigtland which is now the national anthem of Denmark. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.